Hey there, everyone. Hello. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, we are going to make some more pom-poms tonight. I'm on location in my mom's craft room. Uh, I am going to attempt to sculpt a lion. So we were playing around with it a little bit last night, but I'm going to start a whole new one. We are going to try and get eyes, a mouth in there, and then sculpt an actual lion out of pom-poms. And we are using the Clover pom-pom makers. I'm testing those out tonight. So thank you guys for joining me here tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can see the whole process along the way and work on projects with me. So thanks again for, for joining me, everyone. Uh, we are back to making pom-poms. So I just got these uh, clover pom-pom makers and I got them in, they're basically four different sizes. So they come, uh, these two come together. I call this the large and extra large and then these two come together. Uh, so I call them the small and the extra small. So they are in the shop right now uh, at Penguin and Fish in the supplies section, but I thought we just test them out. So I've been only using this one uh, and I just take my old embroidery floss, like floss that's just sitting around and I put it all together kind of randomly and just uh, see what happens with the pom-pom. And so now I have these these other sizes. So we've been playing around with those. So we made like the little itty bitty size last night. So this is with the embroidery floss. It just is fun and silky. And then we used some poofy white with some sparkle and that looked cool too. So we just tested out the different sizes. I'll show you some of that. But I want to actually show you how you can make figures and designs and actually sculpt with these pom-poms. I think it's gonna be kind of fun. So we're gonna play around with that a little bit tonight. Uh, I wanted to show you guys my mom's uh, granny square quilt though. Uh, she's working on that quilt as well. Uh, so let me flip you around and we will we'll start doing that. All right, you guys. So here we are tonight. I am in my mom's craft room. And all right, so I wanted to show you uh, my mom's my mom's uh, granny square quilt. So first of all, she received this really cute card. She was on the fence of working on it and she didn't know what colors to pick or anything, but then she got this card in the mail and uh, um, Oh yeah, so Gretchen's saying, oh, I didn't know she was doing it too, yay mom. Yes, so she wasn't. And then she got this in the mail and she's like, oh, those colors are fabulous. So she took this card to her fab down to her fabrics and picked out colors from this card. And wait until you see these blocks. They look so juicy and yummy like this card. Uh, so here's the card. And uh, look at some of these blocks that she's making. Ugh, they're so saturated and yummy and uh, they're all just different. But you can tell uh, the inspiration definitely came from, from that card. Ooh, look how colorful that one is. So, ooh, I love that. I love this because these are colors I would never chose would have chosen together like this brown with some of this red and orange and look how stunning it is so anyway so you can just really tell that it's coming from from this card isn't it so ooh, look at that one so it's just so fun what a neat way of doing it like just finding just find something around you that you love or that's inspiring as far as colors go and she literally took this went to her fabrics, picked out fabrics that looked like the looked like this, and then just did our same process, cutting strips and then randomly uh, putting the blocks together. Ooh, that is pretty. I love when these pinks and oranges go together. You know I like my coral pink colors, so uh, anytime those go together. Ooh, that's fun too, that's bright. Uh, anytime those go together, it's really fun. Look how red that one is. That's almost like a little ombre of red. Oh gosh, and with that dark in there, that's fun. So anyway, these are her blocks so far. I just thought they were the juiciest, yummiest things and completely inspired by this card. I mean, it really, 
you could just put it right next to it and you know instantly that this is this is what it's uh, coming from. I, I, I'm so excited to see this finished. So I needed to share that with you guys. I just thought it was so beautiful. <laughs> oh, the black centers. Oh my gosh. You know, I didn't even... I, that didn't even occur to me. You're right. There, it, It's actually like a really dark brown, but I didn't even look at the center. I was just all mesmerized by the outside colors. But you're right. Just that nice little dark center is really kind of cool, isn't it? Ooh, pretty. Ooh, even this in the light one. Oh, I love that. Okay, I am just obsessed. That has been one of my favorite quilting projects so far. All right, you guys. Uh, so we have making we've been making these little pom poms, which have been so fun. Uh, so here are the different sizes that we did last night, uh, in some different materials. So uh, this was with the smallest one, and this is the embroidery floss, and then just a nice like acrylic yarn. This is that small size, so they're a little bit bigger. And you can trim these down to whatever size you want to, which is kind of cool. Uh, here's the that size. We didn't make um, a different one out of there. And then this one was the big blue. Look how big that is. So just a fun mix of different sizes. This one, we actually started trimming down. And you can see that the more you trim down, you can make it like as big as, as this one. But look how dense it gets. And you can actually like sculpt out of it. Like, look, at we were trying to kind of see what a lion head might look like. And I thought that was just so interesting. So tonight I wanted to kind of show you how one would maybe do something like this, but also get eyes and a nose right in there. Uh, so I want to kind of redo this with that in mind. We can even get some ears and we will just start sculpting a lion and have it kind of like look like a lion um, on all sides. And then maybe we'll even have time for like a body. We can make like another, another puff ball, a uh, pom pom underneath and uh, make like a little body or something. So I thought we'd play around with that tonight. So I actually have my mom's like a bin of kind of, this is her bin of like weird, um, weird yarn, you know, so some of this like ribbon yarn. I thought it'd be fun to try a pom pom out of one of, one of these kind of like decorative yarns uh, too. But I, I also had like some other colors in here that would be good for eyes and a nose. So I got it out. I would actually love to try and make a pom pom out of excess yarn. So maybe we maybe we do some of these weird pom poms first, just really quick, just because I'm really excited about it. I want to try. Uh, there's only this much, so I got to make sure that I can do half of each. But let's try doing. Let's just see what fabric looks like. I mean, this is super cool. I mean, this should work, right? I don't see any reason why this this wouldn't work. It can probably just go around like twice or three times. Yeah, I would just kind of call this done. How fun is this going to be? Ooh, I'm really excited. Um, all right, and so I'm using my mom's scissors as well. So these are the same scissors that I have. It's that uh, these are those really, really nice Kai scissors. So this is K-A-I. And this 7000 series, this is their like primo, yummy, perfectly cutting stuff. So she actually has different sizes than, than mine. This is the 7250. I think I have the 7230. Uh, I think this is like a, what is this? I think this is a, oh, so this is a 10 inch, a 10 inch dressmakers shears. I have the eight inch, I believe, which is a bit, a bit shorter. So I like that one. I think I'm going to use this one though today. She has another, uh, this is a tailoring shears and this is a six inch tailoring shears. So this is just, again, cuts through anything. It is a beautiful, beautiful scissors. And they make other like less uh, expensive ones as well. But man, this, the 7000 series ones, ooh, they're good. They also make some with serrated edges. I don't know if this is one of them, but they make some with serrated edges. So when you cut fabric, it kind of grips the fabric as you cut. I'm kind of interested in seeing what one of those might be like. But let's... um. Let's play around with this fabric idea. I've never done this before, but how cool would it be to like use scrap fabric in this way? I just love, love, love the idea of using up scraps. So this is kind of exciting. We'll see what this looks like. So mom has just kind of 
uh, she was actually weaving with some of this. So she's putting together little strips. She's cutting holes in the strips and kind of plopping them together. Um, and uh, I think this is excess from like a placemat that she she made. Or I'm going to go one more time and then I think I'm going to put... Well, yeah, I think this is more than the other side. So I'm going to I'm going to plop this down. We'll trim out a little bit and then we'll put the rest of this on back on the other side here because I, I don't think I put as much over here. Oh, maybe I did. It's looking kind of thick. But I want to try some of that decorative yarn too. I think that'll be kind of fun. All right, we added a little bit extra. We'll have to trim for sure. Um, all right, next up, we just cut down the middle. So now this is something, just um, watch, that this is going to come in later when we do that lion. When we, so this is like one side of the pom-pom, like this is like the front side of the pom-pom, and this is the back side of the pom-pom. But when we cut, it's going to split open, and we're going to have a mirror image of each side. So when we design later, we are going to have to be thinking in mirror images. Um, so that'll be kind of, kind of image interesting so just think about that while we do this this might be a total fail but i like the idea of this potentially working this could be like the cutest scrappy little pom-pom it's that whole like kind of farm look with scraps all right i'm digging it so now this i think i'm gonna have to use a smaller piece of yarn um, to tie it together. What about this? This pink is kind of cute. I think this would kind of go with it. Oh, this is kind of weird and stretchy though. Mm. Fine, we're gonna use the weird and stretchy yarn. Like I said, this is my mom's bin of weird yarns. So it's like odd ribbony yarn and um, I organized, uh, I think last time I was here I organized all her scrap yarn and all the weird yarns got its own, got, got its own back, basket. All right, so I'm, I'm putting the thread in that little kind of divot on this, and I'm just going to pull it through. So I'm yanking on it. So now it's basically in the center of um, all our fabric here. Ooh, we're going to make a big old mess in here again, too. So it's kind of fun. All right, tying a knot, and the knot is going straight into the center of this pom-pom maker. Let's do another knot. Whoa, all right, so I guess that's not very strong. <laughs> so I think we're fine, but this is some weird oddball thread. So I was able to just pull that thread apart, but I think we do have the knot. We'll find out soon enough, this might just be scrap. Ugh, should I try again? I'm wondering if I should, let's just, yeah, you know what? I better try again. Let's use this. This is acrylic yarn. I know this is heftier. I'm just afraid that that the knot didn't take and it, I'll open this and then there will be nothing holding it together. So that's no good. All right, noted that weird yarn is not strong. I just still love this idea for gift wrapping and uh, I w I'd love to do a pom-pom wreath. A pom-pom wreath with all of this recycled fabric would be so cool. Um, we'll cut down all these weird ends uh, next. All right, so we have the knot tied in the middle. Now we can open open these guys up. So I'm opening um, those two tabs. And let's open the other side as well. We could actually just probably... Eh, nah. I was thinking we could just pull it apart, but I think we really kind of want these open first. <gasps> it's going to be so cute. Oh, my God. It is adorable. <laughs> wow. Okay. It is really, really cute. This is so darling. Imagine this on like a, just a gift. It is so cute. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to make a ton of fabric scrap ones of these. All right. Now we can kind of go around and trim it, trim any like weird long ones out. But oh my gosh, uh, this is way better than I thought it was going to turn out. It is really cute. I'll try and take a nice photo of this when we're done because this is, this is exciting. I got to tell you, with the scrap, the scrap little strips like that. Oh, it's so, uh, um, so like vintagey looking too. All right. <laughs> 
that was a good experiment. That turned out, oh yes, Sylvia saying better than a bow, for sure. This is just like the upgraded version of a plain bow for sure. And how easy was that? That took us like six minutes, if that. And just cause I'm yammering, I mean, that could have, we could have done that whole thing in two minutes probably. Ah, uh, fun. All right, that was exciting. I, I really am stoked about that. Uh, let's do another one with some really oddball yarn. Um, let's let's try again. I have my mom's bin of just like weird, like ribbony yarn. Um, ooh, let's try this. Oh, this is kind of Christmassy. Let's here's some of that ribbony yarn, and um, let's see what this ends up like. Ooh, what if we do this with it? Look at this crazy town um, yarn. Let's do both of these. Let's just wrap them together. Let's just take two ends. Now this is gonna be crazy, but this will be like super Christmassy. These are very, very different textures. Oh gosh, I can't believe I found the end. Um, let's just do them completely together. Like we're winding them together. Oh, okay, I'm excited. Let's do a giant one again. This is way too fun. Like this is just silly fun making these. Oh, that's a good idea. Susan is, is saying great identifier for luggage at airport carousels that's for sure you know we always we have a little ribbon that we put on our bags and you're right just something just something extra big poof uh to add to that and if it just wears down then just just do another one. Oh gosh you know what we should get okay i'm redoing this one just because i got an idea let's get some of this sparkly white in as well we'll do just a mix of like all the Christmassy colors all and all different crazy textures all at once. So this is, this is that um, like acrylic with that sparkle <laughs> in there. This is some weird loopy fuzzy green something or another. And this is um, like that red ribbony, I don't know, almost hand dyed looking bit, but ooh, so three different textures, three different colors. I love that we can use like these alternative things with this. This is gonna be fun. All right, I think I'm gonna have to wind quite a bit here. Oh my God, look how Christmassy it looks already. That white was a good add to this. Oh, it's good. So, you know, you can do wind more than one thread at, at once. So this will make things go faster for sure. Oh, I should. Gretchen says I really need to make one of these for, for Chad Kitty. I wonder what he would do with it. He'd probably just look at me like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I got a weird twist going on in here. He's a funny cat. He's one of those cats that it's, it's his world and he's gracing you with his presence a little bit. Um, <laughs> he has to be in human mode to tolerate you sort of thing and it's funny when he uh, if he's like if he's ready for a person and he wants to be pet and stuff he will he'll meow and um he's an outdoor kitty so he'll come out of the woods somewhere and uh meow and he'll he'll stretch he's got to do his stretch so like his downward dog stretch um and then you know he's ready you gotta He's got to be ready for for you first, uh, but I don't know. I don't know if he do. He he's he's not always too reactive to non nature things. Ugh, this green is so tangly. I mean it it looks like a, it looks like a project was started with this because this looks like a nice ball of yarn and this just looks like some weird mass that it started out as. So this will be a little bit of a challenge, but I don't know. I'm thinking mom's gonna be happy that I'm using up some of this random, random yarn. You know what, I bet you this yarn one with this fabric one is gonna look so good together. So I'm really loading this up. Um, someone asked last night and I didn't, I didn't see, um, see it till after, but how much to put on? And there's really, I, I really don't think that there's any real right or wrong to that. I'm really kind of loading it up because uh, then you're going to have a thicker ball. It's going to have more more yarn 
more yarn trying to just be all dense in there. So, I mean, I'm going almost all the way to the bottom here with this big fat yarn. With the embroidery floss, I can't always get that much. But you can do it less, and it'll just be a more airy um, sort of ball. But I think, you know, traditionally I, you want, like, these really big poofers. I think we're about good here, and, and this yarn ball is really getting annoying. So let's, let's, eh, it needs one more root around. Ugh, maybe not. It's being annoying. Let's trim it. Oh, let's close it up first. And trim. Let's do the other side the same way, though. I think this one's going to be really pretty. Uh, let's deal with this, though. This is being super dumb. And it's such a weird fuzzy yarn that it's hard to tell what's, what's happening. I'm just going to try and... So one, one issue when you're using um, scrap yarn, it doesn't want to always play nice. I think we got it here, though. This one's gonna look good. All right, and then after we do this, I mean, I'm doing, I'm trying this out just cause I wanna see what different textures look like. We started that a little bit yesterday, but um, like I said, this is three different textures of yarn. We're doing it all at once. And then we have this completely other texture of just fabric scraps. And I mean, there's really a lot of fun flexibility with, with this. I'm a little bit new to all these pom-poms, so it, it's, been fun for me to experiment and try try these new pom-pom makers out like this big one and I do have a few more up in the shop uh, if you want to grab some I definitely see myself doing more of this before the holidays so every once in a while we might pop on and make make a few more pom-poms for gifts and whatever else this is just kind of neat and again, I love it for using up scrap yarn, scrap floss. This one's going to look good, I can tell. It's going to be really fun. This is like a nice traditional Christmassy pom-pom. All right, that wound up really quick. I think we're done. Okay, I really made that fat too. Did I make this one as fat? I think I'm going to put a little bit extra on here now that my um, this is less unruly, this green. So let's, let's add more to this because my other one kind of went all the way uh, parallel to the bottom. So I think, I think the other, this side's a little thicker. So I want, I want them to feel like they're the same thickness. Whoa. All right. And then we're going to, oh, this is a lot. Then we're going to play with um, making an actual design in your, in your pom-pom next. So that'll be kind of fun. All right, let's give this a trim. We're making our big mess already, which is always kind of a side effect of doing pom-poms. All right, we're closed up. Let's, ah, it's good. Oh my God, look at it. The different textures is really fun. It just is one extra level of playfulness really, I think. All right, cool. Let's use, let's just use more of that white as our in the middle yarn. That seems good. Oops, I suppose let's cut it first. It doesn't really matter where you pull it through, but remember we're putting in that groove and then we're pulling it all the way in. That's getting it to the center of our ball. And then ideally as tight as you can get this. I don't know, you know, really how you get that first knot tight and get the second one going, but I don't know, doing my best. Oh yes, like a confetti palm, exactly. But man, the sparkle, oh, I caught a little piece here. Come back. Um, the sparkle in this yarn is really kind of fun. Oh, this is gonna make me sneeze, this one, I think. All right, let's. Ooh, I'm opening up these sides again. Look at it start blending together. Ah, it's so cool. All right. Oh, look how large it is. <laughs> oh my God, it got huge. So this pom-pom maker really makes some big pom-poms. Wow, okay, that's cool. It just like 
popped open gigantic. Look at that. Let's shake it out a little bit. It was even hard to shake. Okay, let's shape it. This one's a little kind of looks a little oblong here. Let's just shape some of these long bits and there's a big long area or this just feels wider over here. We could actually trim this as small as we want and the smaller we get the denser all all the yarns will get. But you can really kind of shape it and play with this as much as you want giving it a little haircut. I'm just trying to get like it semi round and all the little long bits kind of evened out. It really does feel like you're sculpting a little bit though. And that's definitely what we're gonna be doing next when we do this lion. Oh, I can't believe how poofy this got. Oh, this is a good one, you guys. Um, I'll definitely try and take some photos of these and post later. Ooh, it's so big. This would be awesome, like a pile of these in a reef, a wreath. Well, Yolanda says, oh, I love how this one turned out. Yeah, this was actually a surprise. When, it, when I popped it out of there, I was like, oh, dang, this one just poofed up. It's kind of fun just trimming it, trimming all the little long ends on it. But again, so this is that three different textures. Oh, it is so beautiful. And we put a lot of yarn on there. So this is already like a dense uh, ball of yarn, but look at the different textures in, in both of these, but they're both just so cool. All right, I'm, I'm really happy with both of these. And it's fun working with that big, I mean, I love the little itty bitty pom-pom makers because it's just so fun making, you know, cute itty bitties. Like look at the difference in, in size of these two. And that's not even the smallest. So this is, Here's here's similar yarn. This is that white yarn, the same white yarn that we used in here. So here's the smallest, here's the extra small, and here's the large. So that's the difference with similar yarn, really. So that's that's this one and um, and this one. So it, it's you know, the contrast in these is just about the contrast and size of these. But wow, I'm I am really surprised at how big that one this, uh, how big this one actually did get. All right, let's. Let's try and do um, a sculpted piece now with different things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit more of what you can do with these. So I forgot to bring my book here that shows this, but I'm gonna, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of, we'll figure it out and I'm gonna kind of show you uh, what I mean by this. So let's look at some of the um, anatomy of this a little bit. Uh, all right, so we've already seen that like this is one side of the pom-pom and this is the other side of the pom-pom. So we can actually think of it as the front of the pom-pom and the back of the pom-pom. So when we're designing something, um, I'm gonna think of this as the front and I'm gonna actually think of it as, when I'm sketching an idea, I'm gonna think of it as a circle. So here's a circle about the same size but I'm gonna put a line right down the middle like there's a line right down the middle here. Okay, so remember when we cut through the center, like we wrapped it all up and we cut through the center and then it opens up like this. Um, so it's a mirror image of each other basically. So we gotta think of this as the opened up version right here. So when we close it up, when we close it up like this, anything that's on the most outside, so we've wound and wound and wound, and now we're to the last row, the most outside row that we've wound, that's what's gonna be the most outside of our circle. So the first part that we wind, like the first little threads that we wind around here, that's gonna be the first thing that touches our circle. That's gonna be the most inside. So we have to think of it, it's a little bit of brain origami, uh, but if we think of this opening up like a mirror, so this opening up like a mirror, we can kind of see the most outside threads will be the most outside of this circle, and the most inside threads, like our, the first things that we wind, will be the most inside here. So, all right, that'll make sense in a little bit. So. I want to design a lion. So I'm going to draw, let's just 
kind of draw it kind of like how we had it here. So there's like a head down here and then there's like the mane. So let's let's do something similar. So here's here's the head and then we're gonna have the mane all over the place, right? And I gotta think about this as a mirror image. So I'm just, the head is gonna be the same color, but I'm, I'm just kind of visualizing it here. So we're gonna want eyes. So let's, let's draw some eyes. Let's draw an eye here and it's gotta be the mirror image over there. Let's draw a nose, something like this. And gosh, I don't know, should I attempt? We could attempt maybe a face, but I'm kind of tempted to maybe just leave it as a nose. Maybe, maybe let's just try a little smile down here, I'm trying to make it be easy. So we could, we could attempt to make a little bit of a smile. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. But let's say that's, that's my design. And I could put some ears in, but I think let's just keep, keep it simple and maybe we can get some of the ears in as we sculpt. All right, so remember we had this line divider and it's gonna open up like this. So what we can do, what, we can, what we're really doing is taking half of this and putting the yarn on the spool like this. So if this is our center line, what do we got there? This is all outside color, outside color, outside color. Then we have the nose color. Then we have a little bit more outside color, some mouth and more outside color. So that's gotta be our first wrapping around here. And we can put it in the same spot. So, you know, this is about the halfway point. So the nose is about another halfway down. So we can find the halfway point here. And if we go around the circle, another halfway point down is right there. So that's kind of where our nose would have to go. So um, then we have the second row. So let's just pretend it's a second row. The second row might all be might all be the main color. And then the third row, we go down and then look, we gotta get a little eyeball in there. And then the rest is all the main color. So it's a little, it's actually a lot confusing. It really is a little bit of brain gymnastics, but if you think of it as this is the same as this, and we just have to plot out those different shapes. And then this head, we will carve later, like how we carved out this by just cutting it really, really short. So this is what I would like to try. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And then, so again, this is just the front. This is just this piece right here. We actually have the whole back as well, but the whole back, let's call this the back. I'm not gonna do anything special. I want the back to just be all, all the one color. So I think that is the plan. So this will be the back. The front, we will attempt to put like an eye and a, at least a nose in there. We'll, we'll attempt a little bit of a mouth maybe. And that will be our um, lion that we try and sculpt. So let's give that a go. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't think I have this yarn by me. We're gonna have to do this a different color. So let's, let's try and do this with what did we use here? This was kind of pretty. We can make a, like a white lion. <laughs> Let's just make a white sparkly lion because that's what I got here. Um, I don't have this uh, yarn near me. So let's do a white sparkly lion. Let's give him these dark blue eyes and let's give him like a little pink nose. I think we should do kind of like this right here. And maybe his mouth can be, his mouth can be pink too. Let's just, let's just give that a go. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's get our first bit here. And so remember this first, I need, um, I need a first, I need the nose and I need the mouth in this first layer. So I'm gonna try and get that right now. So the nose again was about a little bit more than halfway. So it's about right here. Again, the first, the things that are most close to our center line is the things that we put on first. It is a little confusing. So let's, let's, this is just gonna be our nose. I think that's good enough. We have a little bit of dark color. It might be actually a, a kind of big nose, but we'll just, yeah, yeah, I'm a little scared. Let's just make a little less, less color there. And um, we'll trim that. Actually, 
I'm gonna have to hold that while I do the next color. Actually, I can I can put some white around it. So next, we're gonna cover that in white because this next layer is all white and all the way up to the top is white. So let's just start in with our white and that'll hold hold this in place. And I'm, I'm more comfortable holding it this way, I think. Ooh, let's get this back up. So in theory, this should be a nose. We will see. Oh, you know what? I did the nose the wrong color too. Shoot, all right, let's do that again. I wanted the nose this color. So about right here. And we can actually look at it sideways if that's, if that's helpful. So again, we are only doing that. Let's match. Let's match this. Actually, let's even fold that in half. This and this and this is what we're trying to create sideways here. That might be helpful, especially for positioning. And even for a triangle, to make this triangle shape, we should have like just one little bit of yarn here and then build it up a little bit, a little bit higher. And, oop, and layer it on top of each other. That might get us that triangle shape. All right, let's trim. And now let's get a bunch of that white around just to hold this in place. Oh, this is gonna be exciting. So I'm gonna warn you up front, this is gonna look crazy town when we trim it. It is gonna look nothing like a lion. <laughs> so it's this first little area, it's, it's white all the way up. So we're gonna just put tons of white on here. Actually, it might take a little while because this white is a little thinner than what we've been working with, but it'll be a nice solid poof because we're going to put a ton of yarn on here and it's going to be with this kind of thin yarn. Um, so we might be here for a little bit getting all this in. I suppose we could have made like a colorful, we could have combined yarns for this. That would have been kind of neat. All right, so right now I've put a couple layers here. I've covered up our nose. Soon, once we've gone like this deep, we're gonna need to put an eyeball in here too. But let's work on this mouth while we're here. Let's, let's try and do it with this, this color here. I'm gonna not even snip this, let's just leave it. Eh, that might be hard, I am gonna snip it. Okay, so here is our little mouth. Yep, I'm, I'm not to the eye. So Tracy, Tracy as, is asking, don't forget the eye. But remember, here's our center line. That's the closest to the, bl the blue. I need to go out a little bit with our yarn before I do the eye. So I have to put, because remember, we're, we're mirroring this opening. We're coming open. So if I do the yarn, or if I do the eye when it's right to right against the blue, it'll be right on the center line. So our eyeball, our eyeball would be like right here right? So I need to get some white in and like this much white and then I will do an eye and then I will do the rest. It is, is like I said, a little bit of a mind origami. So this, the mouth that I'm doing now, it is touching my center line. So what that means is I'm going to actually touch the blue on here. It's going to be my center, center blue. So I don't know, this is going to be our mouth. I'm a little... <laughs> worried about how this is going to turn out, but let's, let's just see. I think I actually need to put some white over it because you see how it, it kind of comes up a little bit. That means there's like a little chunk of white right here. And then I got to put a little bit of, of the blue on top of it. Oh, what do you mean by like the control factor? So Oh, like how, how well, like how is this going to look? Well, that's, that's going to be, that's what we'll see. Um, we will be able to, like I said, we can carve this down, which is what we're going to do. So it's going to look totally crazy. I'm telling you. And then all of a sudden it will start looking like how we're intending it to. I think this mouth is going to be crazy, but we're going to give it a try. Uh, all right, let's, let's cover this in white. And then I'm gonna go over this a couple layers and then we need to get that eyeball in. And then we need to get like all the rest of this. 
But yeah, so when we first cut this, it really is gonna look weird. It's gonna look like, well, that's clearly not what we we're going for. But as we carve, we're gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper into it. All right, let's give the let's give the eye a ball a go. I don't know quite where it's gonna end up, but let's let's pretend it's gonna end up in the right spot. I don't know. I think I'm gonna just leave this hanging here. All right, so it's about halfway and then a little down for the eye. So I think we're really just gonna maybe go around this twice, maybe? There, that's gonna be the eye. We're just gonna see what that ends up being. And now we just need to do the rest of the work. Let's just get this really wrapped in white. So now I'm working on the rest of this, the farther and farther and farther away from the center point. We're just gonna go. So I'm gonna cover up all those other colors that we put in for the nose and the mouth. And we're just gonna wind the heck out of this thing. We're gonna make our little sparkly albino um, lion here. I think this is gonna work. Um, it'll be fun sculpting this a little bit. I think we'll have enough time to kind of, might be a little long tonight just cause I think uh, it might take a little time to sculpt this, but um, I think we can work on this tomorrow too. So I'll be here tomorrow back in mom's craft room. And uh, I want to do some more pom-pom stuff. So maybe we can make, um, finish this up if it still needs some work and maybe make a whole body and we can glue it together. And I don't know, see, make a little creature, see what it ends up looking like. We're just experimenting. So I really am loading it up. I wouldn't have to do this much, I don't think. But like I, like I said, the more you load it up, the bigger like dense poof you're gonna get. Like this is a really nice dense poof. And I mean, if you're making a pom-pom, why not make it super hefty? I gotta make sure I get the sides here. It all kind of like um, hit some in equilibrium. Like if I don't get this edges too much or like as well as the middle, but still do want to get them. All right, this is plenty, I think. Let's let's just call it a day um, as I keep winding. Let's close it up. Ooh, it's pretty, this sparkle. All right, now the back, so remember this is the front, this is the back. So like the front of the head, the back of the head. Oh yes, so Sylvia's saying it's probably easier to carve when it's more dense. It will definitely get denser and denser and denser as I carve. And that's what we're kind of going for, that kind of solid look in the middle, kind of like how this is a little bit more solid or, or like how this, how it's a little airy on the outside. But as we carve down, I mean, we're getting denser towards the center there. Um, all right, so front of the head, back of the head, back of the head, we're just gonna do all white. So let's just, um, let's just wind, keep winding. Let's do a whole pile of this. We're gonna really use up a lot of this white yarn. This white yarn that I've probably had for decades. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where this came from or why I used it. Um, oh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I used it in my uh, sew and stitch embroidery book. I did some snowflake um, gloves, like with em embroidery um, on, uh, on some recycled gloves. I like recycled sweaters. I think this was the snowflake embroidery yarn. So I probably just got it from Joanne's. This is probably just like an acrylic with a little filament, a colorful filament in it. So we're doing the back. So remember, this is the front of the head, the back of the head. We have no design at all. So we're just filling this whole thing with um, the same color, which is the white. But if you're plotting it out, that's what it would look like. I just wanna fill this up. This is still much faster, this, this yarn, than um, the embroidery floss. I hope this is as poofy as our kind of Christmassy one here. I'm thinking it should be. We're really kind of getting it on here. Ugh, it's so nice to have the center pull from the yarn so it's not flopping around everywhere. On yarn, a ball of yarn like this, if you're not if you don't do a lot of stuff with yarn, uh, there's typically, if you can dig into the center, you can pull out and then find an end there, and then you can pull out all the yarn uh, versus the the end that's like going around on the outside. And then it doesn't roll over the whole living room or anything, it just pulls from the center and it's so much more manageable. Uh, 
so that's that's what's nice about this right now. I can just pull it from the center. Although now that it's getting almost done, it's getting a little unruly. Ooh, looks like I've got a little dent in the middle here. I must not have put as much in the middle as other ones. Oh, it's so sparkly. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a sparkly holiday line. All right, come on, guy. There we go. Oh, hey, Noeline. Yes, yeah, so Noeline saying I finally made it to YouTube. So yeah, so I'm on location today, uh, which means I can't stream to to two different places at once. So I'm I'm here on YouTube because that um, typically has been a little bit easier. Has worked, has failed less. Let's call it that. Techni techn with the technical stuff, it's failed less than the YouTube. All right, here we go. Ooh, we're gonna reveal what we did. I forgot, you know, I already forgot we wound all that white and I forgot we had done, tried a whole face on here. So again, I'm gonna warn you, it's gonna look crazy town, but I'm hoping that we can make it, make it work. Um, once we start carving, you'll start to see it develop and that's kind of the fun of it. All right, ooh, there's the back. Uh, let's see what this looks like. I'm a little nervous. So remember, just to review, we tried to do this and it's gonna open like a mirror. So especially with the eyes, you'll notice, you'll see one dot on one side and one on the other. And that's because we put it a little further up on that arc away from our center line, which is the blue. Like the, this is our center line here. So the eye should be like here and here. And then the nose should be right in the center. So let's see if that actually happened because that's the goal. Oh, here's our little mouth. Here's the nose. Ooh, look, I can see it. it already might be a little smiley thing. There's our funny nose. And here are the eyes. See, look, there's that gap. There's that gap a little. So one eye is here and then the other eye um, mirror image is over there. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. So here you can see there's the center line. Uh, this will come together when we take the blue off, but there's the nose that we did right on the center line, the mouth right on the center line. And then we had to wind this much white before we could do the eyeball because we're going away from the center line. So here's our center line. We wound some white and then put the eyeball in. So I, uh, the concept's there. Let's see if we can get it the, the rest of the way. <laughs> it looks like a, some alien pig right there. Um, all right, let's 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 get our, oops, that's from a pom-pom. Uh, I think let's, let's pretend that we want the yarn to come off of the bottom of the head here. So let's put the yarn through like here. Let's just trim this. And I can always trim this yarn smaller later, but I think, yep, right there. Let's, let's get it a little bit to the back here. Ooh, I almost um, was opening this a little bit. Let's go right there. So I'm a little to the back of the head. There's one and let's tie it around here. I'm just doing like two little ties here. Oh, it's like a polar bear. Well, there you go. I'm still gonna do the tiger or the lion just cause it has like this big mane, but you're right. It totally, this would totally work as a polar bear. I kind of love that idea. Oh, how would we make a polar bear? You could actually like sculpt the body a little bit. Um, I don't know, let's, let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna undo the back first, just cause that's the boring side. Ooh, there, there the poofs are coming together. So let's see how the poofs come together here. All right, so there you can kind of see um, like where it was split, it's coming together. So we do have a little bit of a mouth there or a little bit of a face, I mean, a little bit of some edges there. <laughs> and uh, I'm telling you, we are gonna be able to make this look like a lion. I'm, I'm, it's gonna work. So let's floof it out. And now the real work comes in the carving. So this is where we might even wanna draw this carving out a little bit. So I am going to, let's just think about this a little bit. I am going to, let's do it from the side. So, so let's say, let's start with a circle. 
and I want like a big mane in the back. But okay, what is this? What is let's, what does this face look like? In theory, they maybe have like these cheek things, and here's the nose, here's the eyes. So these have to poof out a little bit, and then here's like the face. So if we were drawing this from the side, let's see those cheek poofs, and then maybe it'd be a little shorter. Oh my god, I have no idea. Eyeballs there. <laughs> I don't know, can we keep these cheek poofs? That's that's the challenge. So let's let's just start by shaping the face. And this is what's gonna look so bizarre because we are gonna cut right into this face, and you'd think we'd cut away the face, but it's actually gonna it's gonna still be there. So let's well let's start by just trimming it so it's a nice little circle. Let's let's start with the obvious. But it already looks like a polar bear, doesn't it? Or like a seal, like a what are those? Those white little, oh, like a baby seal. Gosh, it really does look like a baby seal right now. Okay, we're gonna change this baby seal into like a an albino lion. Uh, the reason I wanted to do that is just again to show you how poofy the one side is and how dense it can get. This is actually really pretty dense because we did put a, a lot of yarn on there. Okay, so I wanna carve this face way down, so I'm just gonna start snipping. Let's just snip all the way in there crazy all all the way in there's this this looks like we're gonna ruin it but i'm telling you it's just gonna get look it's already looking it's already looking more defined we want to get way in there oh it's cute and we can just get closer and closer to the center of the um poof ball, the pom-pom, and it's just going to get more and more dense. Like, look already, that face is way more defined. This is going to be our initial kind of sculpt here. I'm just going to kind of lay out the face. The face versus the mane. Give it a little floof every once in a while. I don't know about this mouth. We can probably manipulate that a little bit. There we go. That Now the mouth looks a little bit more like a mouth. But all right, let's try and get those little cheek poofs. So I think I'm gonna just trim everything around where the cheek would be a little bit more. So this might be a dumb idea, but we're gonna just get way deep on the top of the face. <laughs> oh, this is where some patience and some sculpting and some practice I think would come in. But again, don't be scared about getting really deep into this. The first time I, I did this, I was nervous to trim off a ton, but it really looks better and better uh, the deeper you get in here. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Let's get down, let's get the nose down a little bit more. And remember, this yarn goes all the way to the center. So you don't have to be worried about, like, will the yarn go away? It's going to be there the more and more you snip. There, he kind of has some fuzzy cheeks here. Let's let's make him even more defined. And again, a nice scissors is handy for here. I'm gonna get his face a little bit bigger around his eyes. It's so silly. This is so, such a weird, silly thing to do. All right, let's get his mouth a little bit less. We'll leave the cheeks. I think I want to get kind of right up in here in the center. We'll carve a shape the shape the little cheeks a little bit. Oh my god, this is the silliest thing ever. These fuzzles are hanging out. But look how dense this is. Completely a different texture, really. I'm gonna just make these into little puff balls, his cheeks. I think I'm gonna carve Carve them down too a little bit. Oh, it's starting to look cute. Okay, I'm 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 seeing this side a little bit more coming together. I'm still gonna work on that mouth. Try and place those threads a little bit better. But look, now we got this little little poof on this side. Ah, <laughs> it's silly. 
let's let's get over here. It's so silly. Oh my god, I'm making such a mess too. Little shape of his head a little bit more. Maybe he's got like more of a triangle head, like maybe it's a little higher on the top. I, I trimmed more over here than here, so I'm going to just trim. You can only trim, you can't put stuff back really. Oh yeah, so I showed, um, if you guys um, are just coming in, I showed my mom's granny square quilt, um, her blocks at the beginning and her inspiration for the color palette. And I just love it so much. Um, it's really kind of fun how it um, looks just uh, like this greeting card that she got. And now we're just playing around with these pom-poms again. But it's kind of, we were like sculpting this winter lion. Trying to get his little cheek, cheek palms going. It's almost like a second little pom-pom here. All right, I'm going to see if I can just kind of shimmy these yarns around. Let's just try and make this more of a smile. Let's just try and squish it a little bit, see if that does the job. It's getting there. This is almost a triangle too. We could probably trim this a little bit. Get this part of the face a little flatter. <laughs> All right, I think that's, here's it from the side a little bit. So you can see we left the little poofs there. Uh, and there's our kind of like little, little lion head started. So that's fun. So that's how you can actually design like a little face or something within, um, within a pom-pom. I mean, you know, just think of the possibilities with this. You could do whole portraits. You could do like emojis. You could do, uh, we tried a rainbow doing it this way, but it's really, you can really have, um, some play around and, have fun with it. Oh yeah, like a monkey. It would. It almost looks like a monkey too. Ugh, it's just so fun. So all right, you guys. I'm gonna flip you around, and then we'll take a look at these little pom poms that we made today. All right. Okay. Hello again. So I'm in my mom's craft room. So let me show you these pom poms just so you can see it, like to size a little bit better. Shake it out. So here is the little lion. <laughs> it's kind of cute. You can see his little face uh, started in there. It's it's a start of something, right? I think it's kind of fun. So here's it from the side again. So we did chop off quite a bit um, from from the side, and he's got a little face in there. It looks like vintagey and kind of grandma-y a little bit, like just super vintage, I think. And that's with the sparkly. Um, thread and then here's that uh, different textured one. So this is those three different textures. Okay, I think we might be cutting out for real now. So 